Hello everybody, my name is Ibrahim Arsalam. Today I will talk about relay logic for motor operation. The first step, uh, we need to know the component and symbol definition. In relay logic, we have a certain component we would like to, to, I would like to talk about. First, the three-phase supply, RST, uh, uh, we represent it by just three wires. If in case if we have single-phase supply, we will have line and neutral wire, circuit breakers, uh, this is the symbol of circuit breaker. Sometimes it changes from uh, uh, design to design, but commonly we use one uh, this symbol. Contactors, the, uh, the contactor we have, it uh, have three contacts and the energizing coil. Okay. Now the overload. Uh, we represent the overload by this symbol. Or other symbol I will show you in our discussion. The three-phase induction motor. Uh, we the three-phase induction motor can have three legs. And they think if if it internally connected star or delta, or if it has the six uh, the six legs, so this uh, induction motor can provide us the ability to connect it as a star or delta four. This motor, this is the symbol of this motor. Depend on this motor. This one is the symbol for uh, shunt uh, motor and this one for series motor fuses this is a sample of the fuse in our circuit push button it can be normally closed or normally open so if you press on the normally closed button it will be converted to norm to open circuit and if you release your hand it will become again short circuit same thing for normally open but Without pressing, it's open circuit. Once you press the button, it will be short circuit. Selector. This is the sample of selector. A relay. We have the, co the relay coil and the contacts. Depend on the relay. Based on the relay, if some relays have one contact, three contact. Depend on the relay design. Indication lamp. The auxiliary contact is contact we attach to our uh, contactor and it can be either normally open or normally closed. Okay, let's have a look. This is the auxiliary contact, how it looks like. And this, the photo shows the auxiliary contact when it attached to our contactor. Uh, it copies the movement of the contactor since it's attached, it's mechanical. So if our contactor moves downward, those contacts will move downward. Uh, this attached uh, unit have four contacts, two normally open and one normally close contact. Now let's have some case studies to understand the relay logic curve. Now let's have some case studies to understand the basics of relay logic control. Okay, direct online AC induction motor starter. We had to, we have to take care about something the induction motor have a high starting current uh, it's about six to ten times its rating current the starting current of induction motor is high so it's, it's about six to ten times of its rated running current or rating current this means that the devices that runs the power on the uh, on to the motor, power on to the motor has to be able to handle a lot of current just for example, a 10 horsepower motor uh, or running uh, once it's full loaded, uh, it takes 14 amp. But its starting current is must, it will be between 84 amp to 140 amp. Uh, this is starting current depends on motor situation and the load condition uh, on the motor. That's why the motor starter is a, a heavy duty electromechanical switches. Okay, the motor starter consists of three main parts. The coil that energizes over it, uh, the second part, the contactor, uh, overload relay consists of a current measuring devices and auxiliary contacts. Relay logic example one. There is a bar, uh, there is a bar and the relay logic circuit of motor control center that can be used to fulfill the following function and use EKTS to simulate your design of direct inline starting of three-phase induction motor. In uh, this uh, example, we will, uh, make, uh, we will perform three different cases. 
first case from single location from two location from two location using selector okay from single location start to stop from one location in relay logic we have two main circuits the main power circuit and the control circuit the power circuit will deal with the motor power itself and the control circuit uh, decide when the motor stop and stop what will happen uh, uh, in the power circuit, we con uh, in the control circuit, we control control the current fl flow from the line to neutral until we reach the coil the coil of the contactor Q1 here. So, if the current flow from line to neutral until it reach contactor Q1, this means contactor one uh, one is energized. So, the contacts will move from normal open to closed position. So the current flow to the motor. Let's have a better look on the main power circuit. It consists of three main parts. Well, the main supply, then we have the circuit breaker. The circuit breaker has a function to protect our motor from overload or short circuit. Then our contactor. Finally, we have the over overload relay. We had uh, we need to know something important that the over uh, the circuit breaker has the ability to interrupt the main power the three phase power from the motor. Just uh, for example, in case of three phase fault, uh, the circuit breaker will open, uh, change its state from closed to open, so it will interrupt the uh, current flow to the motor and protect the motor and the other equipment. Unlike the overload relay. The overload relay uh, will change its uh, it just measures the current, and in case of overload, it waits a certain time based on the setting you add for uh, the setting you add. Then it, it uh, its contact change its state from normal close to normal open or from normal open to normal close. In the control signal, we use the overload uh, signal as a feedback, so we can interrupt the contactor. Uh, turn off uh, the contactor. Okay, let's start. Uh, uh, let's have more discussion about the control circuit. Okay, we have one start button, one stop button. Okay, let's see. The first part here is the fuse we use to protect our control circuit. Maybe uh, the control circuit is hard wiring circuit, so maybe you have wrong polarity or uh, something wrong in our wiring. So to protect our circuit, we use a fuse. Okay. Let's see what will happen when the user presses start. Once start is pressed, the current will flow from here through the switch to the stop button through the overload contact to the contactor coil. The contactor coil will be energized. Once the contactor coil is energized, those contacts will change its position from open to closed, so it will be closed. Then the current will flow from the three phase supply direct to the motor. Okay, the motor now is running. When I remove my hand, if I don't have this latch, the current will be interrupted. The motor will stop. So, to solve this problem, we use the auxiliary contact we just discussed before. The, uh, this auxiliary contact will uh, copy the state of the motor. What does mean? Let's say, let's do it again. We press start, the current flow from the uh, line through the start button to the contactor. Contactor will activate it and the contact changes its position. Once the contactor is activated, the auxiliary contact is physically attached with the contactor. So it will change its state from open to closed. So it will be closed. So once I release my hand from the button, the current will find another path to continue flow. Okay. This uh, this uh, motor stop uh, startup uh, circuit will be interrupted under one of two conditions. The first condition, if I press stop, the I will cut the current flow. The contactor will uh, coil no more current received to it, so it will be energized. So the contacts return to open position. The motor will stop. The other condition, the circuit stop in case of overload, the overload uh, will uh, start counting the time, one second, two seconds, until it reaches the uh, resetting time of overloading. So it will change its contact from normal open, normally close to normal open here. So it will uh, interrupt the current flow, the motor will stop. Okay. To have better understand, we need to simulate the circuit 
I will use AKT as software. It's easy software to learn and easy and provide good knowledge. Here is our software. First, we first need a three-phase supply. Just a double click here. I got my three-phase supply. Then, okay, I just forgot to say something. The AKT is simulates the behavior of the control circuit. It doesn't protect, it's a simulator, so we don't have the protection stuff. Now, from component, I will select a contact, 3 is contact. You can see here is a draw of each element we select. So, three, this is normally closed, normally open. Contact, here is it. Double click on it, then move it, right click, and rotate 90 degree. Finally, we need induction. Single phase, three phase induction motor. I will double click. I got my motor here. Now I will wiring my circuit. As you can see, very easy. Piece of cake. So everything now good. Now I finished the power circuit. I have to prepare my control circuit, so I will need a line and the neutral wire. This is my neutral. I will take it 90 degree. one more 90 degree. Just right click 90 degree, and this is our line. Okay, we have one start button, one stop button, and the contactor coil. Components we have start button. Stop button and contact or coil. Ah, here is it. Okay, let's add our stuff. Rotate by 90 degree. Now, this one here. This is our stop button. Rotate 90 degree. So, maybe there. Just to make our wires look more pretty. Finally, start to button. We can rename it to so we have it better understand. So, we see, see these three dots. You can add start. Double click here, stop. And contactor will name it K1. Okay, and the, the three dots are just a bit like I will find it will require now. This could the contactor coil is now part of this three part. We run our simulation. I just press start. You can see the motor is running. If I remove my hand from start, the motor stop. Why? Because we didn't add the latch. You can see once I press start, the current flow from up to the contactor coil. Once I release my hand, the current will, will not find the auxiliary bus. So I will stop my simulation and I will put our auxiliary contact. Our auxiliary contact normally open contact. That's what to say. And then I will rotate it. Connect the auxiliary contact. Okay. We call it, we attach this one with contact with K1. Let's run again start once i press start you can find the motor is running i remove my hand the current will find another pass through the auxiliary contact the only condition to stop this motor now if i press stop i will interrupt the current flow start stop okay nice and easy let's go to the next part of our lecture okay start motor from one location okay start motor from two location the good thing here, the power circuit has not changed. I just changed in my control circuit. And in this case, I will not have one start button. I will have two start buttons, as you can see here. Start one, start two. Same auxiliary, uh, auxiliary contact and one stop button. Okay, let's add this uh, two button to our simulation. So I need, I will rename it by start one. Okay, we are limited by five characters, so I would st underscore one, 
this means start one and I will add one more button normally open Re -re rotate and I will put it here I will call it stick start underscore two so I can start this motor from two different locations let's say I have a big farm and this is my bomb motor so I can start it from two different my water bomb motor so I can start it from two different locations also we can update our code so we can start it and stop it from two different locations just I need to delete here the wire here and add one more stop button so we have start one and start two stop two and this one will be stop one okay we can run I can start it from any location and I can stop my motor from another location I can start I can stop okay we now need to conclude of what we have done we now know that the relay logic circuit or uh, relay logic uh, consists of two main circuits the main power circuit and the control circuit in the control circuit uh, what we do we just control the current flow until we reach our coil uh, the contactor coil once the contactor is energized the contact changes its position from open to close and the current flow will flow direct to our motor okay start to stop from two locations using a selector so the good thing here we still keep the same power circuit the power circuit are not affected by the control itself that now let's see what will happen the control circuit will have a selector and start to number one start to contactor one contactor two thin contactor sorry we have one contactor so we have contactor one latch contactor latch contactor one and two stop buttons okay and we have here is our selector you can see i moved the overload from down because i didn't uh, it had no sense to put the overload in one direction or in the other direction now i move it up still here so once the overload in case of you the selector is in right or left the power will interrupt okay let's simulate this one same power circuit we just need to modify this circuit a little bit okay i go to stop mode i will read this one i don't need it okay sorry okay we have stop one stop two stop two start one start two and we need a selector so just a second then now this is our selector i will rotate it 90 degree so this is the selector i can see you stay here okay here there now the first we need normal open we need normal open quantum okay we take on the green and I will connect this one here stop one and now we'll go to the contactor Stop two. I will finish our service now. Okay. How nice. Let me move. Okay. Let's simulate our circuit. Oh, why we ha I have error? because I, this contact uh, a contactor or this auxiliary contact are not attached with a coil uh, with any coil so I had to I double click on these three dots and choose contactor now let's run 
when I press here, the motor starts sends the selector it is uh, start top in the right side. Once I press here, the motor will keep running. Okay, I press stop. I can change my selector state. Will not run from this direction, but it can run from this direction. Okay. Okay, I press stop now. I change the select. I use the selector. So start from here and I can start my motor from the other side even the stop will not activate it this way. okay let's go further to our lecture reverse motor direction the uh, reversing startup is used when uh, it is desired to have a three-phase induction motor run in either direction this is done by uh, by uh, by changing any any phases using a contactor so we have a contactor for clockwise direction and another contactor for counterclockwise direction. This means in our circuit we have a contactor, but we mu they must have mechanical interlock. The interlock is uh, must in this circuit to, to prevent having a supply short circuit. Okay, example two, relay logic. Example two. Draw the power and relay logic circuit for, of a motor control center that can be used to fulfill the following function and use ATTS to simulate your design of reverse, reversing rotational direction of three phase induction motor using two start push buttons and one stop push button. Or in the other case, we need to use using two start and push button, buttons and through a select. We will work on the first one. It's easy. Okay. Now let's have a look to our power and control circuit. Uh, let's have a little look. This is our overload uh, circuit breaker overload, no change. But this time we use two contactors with a mechanical interlock. The mechanical interlock prevents the two contactors to activate together. So if contactor one is on, contactor two cannot be turned on. Okay, if contactor 2 is on or active, contactor 1 can't be activated mechanically. Okay, uh, let's follow the current. Uh, the current uh, here, by this way, we supply the motor terminal by RST. Let's have a look. R come from here, is current 0, and T is here. So, contactor 1, this, for example, it will make the motor rotate in clockwise direction. Okay, if I activate contactor 2, how it will, the phase sequence will be? The contactor 2 will reverse the phase, so this one will be R, and this con uh, contact will be S will be here, and T will be there. So T will be in the middle, and S will be at the uh, last, uh, ri the right wire, will be the right wire. This means we reverse one phase. Uh, for better understanding, uh, this means that the motor will it change its direction. Okay, let's go to our control circuit. This is our line. I have one stop button, so I put it on an up top. So just I press on this button, the motor will stop rotating. Okay, I will have counterclockwise start and uh, and uh, clockwise start. Sorry, and counterclockwise start. This is auxiliary contact of the first contactor, and this is the auxiliary contact for second contactor to latch. Same thing as we discussed it, uh, before. But I add also an interlock between contactor 2 and contactor 1 in the core. You can see here, contact, uh, once contactor 1 is activated, it, this pass will be open circuit. So I can't activate contactor 2. So I have two interlocks in my circuit. A mechanical interlock and a control or electrical uh, or a control interlock. This is for extra protection. Okay, let's go to EKTS software to simulate this circuit. Now we have a change in our power circuit. Uh, the first contactor, and I need to add another contactor. Okay, as I mentioned, EKTS software don't simulates the protection so we don't have mechanical interlock okay this one will connect to R phase just to make my wire more clear and this one will reverse the phase so this one will connect T will contact T and the last one will contact S
let's go upstairs uh, up here so the first one will be with r s t just to clean my wire okay now we don't need uh, all of this stuff we delete delete we need, we need one stop button, so it's okay. Delete. This is our line. This is our neutral. This is contactor one coil. We and we need. I'll delete all of this so we can start faster. We can work faster. Contactor one. And T. So we need contactor coil, the contactor to coil, rotate, we'll call it K2, and it has the same neutral, no problem. Now let's add the interlock between K1 and K2, normally close. Rotate normally close. Okay, so to have the interlock, contact one. And here it will be contact of two. Good, good, good. We need to add the start one and start two. I'm sorry, just start, start. So this one will be rotate clockwise. So we need to rotate it. Counter clockwise, counter clockwise. Finally, we need one stop button. Edit it's our stop. Stop. This is our line now. We need to add latches normally open contact. And one more latch. Okay, this latch for contactor 1 and this one for contactor 2. And that, that we can run and see what will happen. Oh, I forgot to touch this one. This one will be contactor coil 2. Okay, run. I press clockwise direction, the motor is rotating. You can see here, it becomes open circuit, so we have a interlock. The interlock having by the control. You can find the current flow from here to there, but if I press on, since the contact one is active, this one is uh, will convert it from normally closed to open circuit. Okay, I'll shut down. I rotate in the other direction. It's clear for you that the motor is rotating now in the other direction since I reverse one of these. Now, see the current flow from here to there and going here. Stop. Now we succeeded to make motor start with uh, direct online start or direct online start and rotating the motor uh, in both direction clockwise and counterclockwise